Hi, Prisarel here. A few videos ago, I said that I was working on a new implementation of a stat system, and today we are going to talk about that. Today's video is going to be mostly just an overview of the new system and how it compares to the original one, and I want to cover three main things. The usage of the system, performance, and implementation. So let's start by checking out how the new system is used compared to the old one. As you will see, the usage will be very similar between both of them. Declaring and instantiating character stats, just a matter of declaring a variable of type character stats that comes from the chris.characterStats namespace, and then we can instantiate it and the arguments for the constructor are a base value or nothing if you wanted to leave it at the default value of zero. For the new stat system, it's simply called stat, and it comes from the namespace freeze.rpg.stats, and then there's a few sub namespaces inside that. In this case, it's default for the default implementation, but there's other things in other namespaces that help this system be more extendable as a program. But in any case, for declaring and instantiating the default stat, it's, once again, just declaring a new stat. The arguments for the constructor are, as before, a base value or nothing, if you want to leave it at the default value of zero. For stat modifiers, it's going to be similar. For the character stat system, the stat modifier is simply called stat modifier. We create a new instance of this. It is now a struct, as per the latest videos. And the arguments for this struct are the value of the modifier, the type, which can be of three different enum values, flat, percent %add, and percent %mold. You can optionally pass in an order integer, specify a different order for this modifier to apply other than the default. And you can also pass in an optional source object. Declaring stat modifiers in the new system is a little bit more verbose. It's also a struct called stat modifier, but this one requires a generic parameter. And for our case, it's going to be of type stat modifier data. And once again, the reason for this is that it allows more flexibility as a programmer if you want to implement your own thing, even though it does make the declaration a little bit longer, unfortunately. And instantiating an object of this type once again requires a float for the value, but then the rest of the arguments, they still exist, but they are not passed in directly into the main constructor. Now you need to instantiate another struct object of type stat modifier data, and this one receives the type, and this time there's a few more types to choose from. There's still the same ones as before, although they have different names. So add is the same as flat, Molt is the same as percent additive, and Molt total is the same as percent multiplicative. But now there's also min and max modifier types. And then you can also optionally specify a source. And this time there's no option to specify an order override. There are still ways to customize the order in which modifiers apply, but that's going to require a different path and some custom implementation. Adding stat modifiers is going to be identical for both systems. For character stat, we just call the add modifier function and we pass the modifier that we just created. And for the new stat system, exactly the same. Call the modifier function and pass in the modifier. The same is going to be the case for removing specific modifier. There's also the ability to remove modifiers from a particular source, so it removes all modifiers that were applied by that same source. In character stat function is called remove all modifiers from source and you just pass the source object that you want modifiers removed from. And for the new stat system, same thing, although the function name is is slightly different, it's simply called remove modifiers from source, doesn't have the all word in it. In the new system, 
there's some additional options. There's also a remove all modifiers that receives a match variable. In this case, the match is just an I equatable, something that implements the I equatable interface. So that means you can remove things more or less arbitrarily if you want to implement your own matching function. But you can also use the existing stat modifier match struct. So you can, for example, remove all modifiers that have a value of 3 or all modifiers that have a value of 3 and are of a specific type. Let's say all modifiers that have a value of 3 and are multiplicative, for example, and that have a specific source as well. But if instead you want, let's say, to remove all modifiers that are less than or equal to 3, you can implement your own. It can be either a class or a struct. In this case, let's make it a struct so that you can instantiate it without allocations. So you would make a struct that receives a value and then implements i equatable. And then you implement the equals method for the i equatable interface. And there you just return true if the value of the modifier you're checking is less than or equal to the value that you wanted. So now you can pass that to the function and you say you want to remove all modifiers with a value of 3 or less. So that's one of the new things that you can do in this new system. There is also a clear method in the new system. To be honest, I should add that to the old one as well. There's not really any reason not to have it. It just clears all the modifiers. Oh, and also, of course, we can't forget that we can change the base value at any time. And it's the same on both systems. Just do stat.baseValue and assign the value we want. And we also can retrieve the final value with all of the modifiers applied. And for the old system, it's character stat dot value. The new one is basically the same, but the variable has a different name. It's called final value instead. To be honest, the names for these things are not final. They are subject to change. So if you have a better suggestion for the names of any variables or functions, feel free to suggest those in the comments. Let's look at the performance between both systems. The test script is very similar to one that I showed in a previous video. So we just generate an array of 100 stat modifiers. And then every frame we add 10 stats, remove those 10 stats, and then we add 100 and remove those 100. This way we can see how the performance scales between different amounts of stats being added. We also test removing from source instead of removing modifiers directly. And we also do an additional test where we add and we get the value immediately after adding the modifier. So the performance characteristics will be slightly different from doing this, adding and getting the value immediately after, or adding a bunch of modifiers and then only at the end of all the modifiers being added, checking the value. Because as you may remember, in the character stat modifier system especially, we don't do any calculations when adding the modifiers. We leave everything for later when we actually need to get the base value. That's when the calculations happen. So we would be expecting this version here to be much slower than this version up here. And we do the same thing for the new system. We also have this bit of code here where we populate the stat with a certain number of modifiers initially that don't get added or removed during the updates. Right now I'm setting those to zero so we can see the performance of doing all of these operations without having anything in the stat to begin with. But we will be messing with this value later so we can see once again the performance scaling between doing these, all of these operations on a stat that has nothing in it and a stat that already has a bunch of modifiers. 
So as we can see here, overall, if we factor in all of the different operations that we did, the new system is slightly faster than the old system, but we can take a look at each of those operations in more detail. So for the old system, the thing that took the most amount of time was removing 100 modifiers. And the second most was adding 100 modifiers. For the new system, removing 100 modifiers was also one of the things that took the most time, but it was significantly faster. And adding modifiers took a little bit more time than that, and it was still relatively faster than the old one. Now where you can see a relatively big difference here, where the old system actually wins, is removing modifiers from source. In the old system this took only 0 0.18 milliseconds, this frame, and in the new system it took an entire millisecond, so this is actually significantly slower in the new one, but we will see in the next few tests, when we add more modifiers as a baseline, we will see how this scales. And for adding and removing only 10 modifiers, the old system was actually slightly faster as well. So as you can see from these tests, if you have a game that is relatively light on stat modifiers, where you're not constantly adding and removing hundreds of stat modifiers from your characters, the old system is probably actually faster than the new one. Another small difference we can see here is that adding and getting the value immediately and removing and getting the value immediately from the old system is slightly slower than in the new one, at least when we have not that many modifiers to begin with. But let's see how this compares when we start adding more modifiers. So instead of having no starting stats, let's see what happens when we increase that to 10. So overall, for the character stat system, all operations became slightly slower than before, some more than others. For example, adding and getting the value immediately and removing and getting the value immediately became quite a bit slower than before. And that's because there's a sort of the list that is happening every time we need to recalculate. And as the number of modifiers increases, this sort will start taking more and more time. But overall, the difference of going from 0 stats to 10 isn't really that massive. However, if we take a look at the new system, it basically didn't increase at all. Almost everything still takes the exact same amount of time, regardless of how many modifiers were in the stat to begin with. So now instead of starting out with 10 modifiers, this should actually be called modifiers and not stats, my bad. So now instead of starting out with 10 modifiers, let's see how the performance scales when we start with 100. Okay, so as you can see here now, the character stat system is taking massively longer, where the new stat system is still taking basically the same amount of time. So even though, like we saw here at the beginning, even though the original system can be faster in the best case scenario, where you don't have any modifiers or very few, in the worst case scenario, it can become really slow, where the new system basically stays consistent the entire time. So, adding and removing 100 modifiers to a stat that already has 100 modifiers takes basically the same amount of time than when the stat has zero modifiers. And that's the case for basically every single one of these functions. For example, if you remember, 
removing from source was one of the slowest in comparison to the original system when the stat had zero modifiers so removing from source took almost 10 times more but now it still takes the exact same amount of time for the new system where for the old system it increased quite substantially well it still doesn't take that long but you can see that it increased almost 10 times what it started out as in a stat that has zero modifiers where the, for the new system it didn't increase at all and the worst offenders more or less like we you would expect are adding modifiers and getting the value immediately and removing modifiers and getting the value immediately because like we said it does a sort of the list every time it needs to recalculate and as the number of modifiers grows the sort is going to start taking more and more time it's not going to be exponential but you can see that it increases quite a lot and one of the cool things of the new system is if you do that the increase is really not that much it does increase a little bit but really almost nothing same thing for removal so yeah to summarize this whole thing if your game is relatively simple and has relatively few stat modifiers that you need you may still be better served by the original character stat system that's still perfectly fine or if you simply prefer a system that has a much simpler implementation but if you're needing to scale your game quite a lot and have entities that have lots of stat modifiers in the hundreds or maybe thousands even then the new system is quite good in terms of performance scaling for situations like that so let's cut it here for today i want to try and release more videos and each video with a more digestible length so we'll stop here today and in the next video that i plan to release early next week we will start having a look more in-depth at the implementation of the new system.